Overnight, Simon Michelle from Fig Securities joins us live now. And I guess no surprise to see yields move higher off the back of that, Simon. ECB upsetting markets, but I guess the question is, could this be a turning point in terms of uh, stimulus or the lack thereof? Well, look, it's, it's interesting, especially considering we didn't really get any forward guidance or any indication that there might be a review of that. Uh, it was only back in March this year that the ECB increased its bond buying program from 60 billion euros to 80 billion euros. And I think what was really interesting is we're starting to get these comments from central bankers that, you know, there's only so much they can do on the monetary policy side and the fiscal policy side does have to work in tandem. Uh, we've heard that from Mario Draghi, we've heard it from Glenn Stevens and, uh, and uh, Jackson Hole recently over in the US. So, you know, I think think, uh, are we getting to a point where, you know, they feel they've done enough and they just need to work through this? Uh, you know, this would be a positive sign for the US. Uh, they sort of wouldn't want it to have seen much more uh, intervention by Europe. So we're at an interesting time at the moment. Yields kicked up a little bit, about four to six basis points across the curve. That was matched here in Australia, so not a huge movement. Or do you think they just think it's not effective anymore? That, that it just doesn't have as, as strong an effect as it used to? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, as we've seen uh, in Japan and uh, also coming up into Europe, is, you know, they're, they're starting to get to a point where, you know, they're, they're going to run out of bonds to buy. You know, there's only so much you can do. And they're already down in negative territory with their uh, deposit rates as well. This incentive to try and get European banks to lend to SMEs, you know, that's the struggle as well, because while you're downgrading growth, you know, who's going to want to step up and borrow that money if they can't put it to use and get any return on it? So, you know, I think they are... I think you're right, Ingrid. I think, you know, central banks are saying, well, you know, we've done pretty much as much as we can. Mm. It's really up to you uh, on the policy side of it, on the fiscal budget, to sort of, you know, meet us halfway. Well, domestically here at home, Qantas is looking at a potential Aussie dollar issue. Talk us through this one. Yeah, so Qantas uh, was uh, upgraded uh, from non-investment grade back up into investment grade uh, end of last year, early this year. Um, the last time they issued, they were in that uh, non-investment grade space. They were going through that turmoil. They issued uh, some 2021-22 bonds at about 7.5%, so quite a high rate of return. Uh, if you look at how those bonds are trading now, they're trading down around 4%. So on the back of that uh, upgrading into investment grade, Qantas can now go to the markets and issue at a much lower yield than it did back in those more volatile times. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, really good story. I think they won't have any problem getting investors to step up for the bond issue. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the outstanding uh, bonds, whether we get some sort of pay down or, or buyback of those. Yeah, one to keep an eye on for sure. Simon, Michelle, appreciate your time. Thank you. Great weekend. Thank you. Sorry, Michelle there from Big Securities. We're well, moving on and climbing.